the king of the north! I am the dragon's daughter. By what right does the wolf judge the lion? Hello, sweet summer children. Over the last two episodes, the show has made some very important book references. And I want to talk about them because I feel they are very important in the episodes to come. And they give us a glance into what might be in store this season. I have four that I really want to talk about, so let's get started. Number four, all the references to Aegon's Conquest. We are getting a lot of references to Aegon's Conquest. There are many parallels between Aegon's Conquest and Daenerys' Conquest. Firstly, we get a lot of visuals that are basically just indirect parallels, and those visuals are just as simple as Dragonstone. Daenerys being in the first seat of Aegon the Conqueror. Daenerys using the same painted table that Aegon had constructed. Samuel Tarly reading a book with Aegon's Conquest referenced in it. Then we get actual word references to Aegon Targaryen and his conquest in relation to Daenerys. Randall Tarly tells Cersei directly that Daenerys has the same amount of dragons as Aegon did when he conquered Westeros. She has three full-grown dragons, your grace. The same as Aegon when he conquered the Seven Kingdoms. When Kyburn shows Cersei the skull of Balerion, he is sure to point out that it was Balerion's fire that forged the Iron Throne and brought the Seven Kingdoms to heal. The beast of Aegon rode across the sea. Its flames forged the Iron Throne and brought the Seven Kingdoms to heal. There is also another parallel in Jon. Daenerys summons Jon to bend the knee, just as Aegon did to Torrhen Stark, which is how Torrhen got the name The King Who Knelt. It went down differently, of course, but you get the idea. A lot of people were wondering why the Baratheon sigil is still over King's Landing in the credits. Well, I don't really know why, and I do think it's odd, but being that it's still there implies that Cersei is a Baratheon. Now, Baratheons are the Storm Lords. During Aegon's conquest, Aegon sent the last Storm King, known as Argiliac the Arrogant, probably butchered the name, but anyway, he sent him an emissary to treat with him. And the last Storm King returned that emissary cut up in pieces. And I think the synopsis of the Queen's Justice, where it states that Cersei returns a gift, that may very well be Cersei sending Illyria, Tyene, or Yara, or all three, to Daenerys dismembered. It would mirror Aegon's conquest and it would definitely wake the dragon. If you want to know more in detail about Aegon's conquest and the parallels it has with Daenerys' conquest, I will link a video I did on that at the top of this video. Number three, all the references to the Mad King. There have been many references to the Mad King, Aerys Targaryen. Cersei calls Daenerys the Mad King's daughter and never by her name. If the Mad King's daughter takes the Iron Throne, she'll destroy the realm as we know it. The Mad King's daughter has ferried an army of savages to our shores. Varys says the Mad King was the worst. There have been few rulers in history as cruel as the Mad King. And Sansa tells Jon to remember what happened to our grandfather when he went to treat with the Mad King. You've forgotten what happened to our grandfather. The Mad King invited him to King's Landing and roasted him alive. The Mad King killed Brandon and Rickard Stark in the throne room of the Red Keep before Robert's rebellion, naming them traitors. Rickard demanded a trial by combat, and the Mad King chose fire as his champion. Brandon strangled himself on a device that tightened around his neck as he reached for his sword. Now, Daenerys may very well venture down a similar path, and Brandon and Rickard of the show might be Randall Tarly and Dickon Tarly. When Jaime meets with Randall Tarly in the throne room, he calls his son Rickard by accident. Sir Jaime, I believe you know my son. Sir Jenny. Rickard, isn't it? Dickel. That's it. Foreshadowing? Maybe. It looks as though House Tarly, a house that has always been loyal to House Tyrell and House Targaryen, is going to switch sides and join with Cersei, and it looks like Daenerys may make them pay for it with fire and blood, just as her father would have. She may very well sentence them to die and name Fire as her champion or just Drogon, being as she has dragons and the Mad King didn't. And if any of this happens, that would make Samwell Tarly the Lord of Hornhill. 
Number two, visions in the flames. The Hound had his first vision in episode one and he sees the wall, a castle by the sea and the army of the undead. In Dance of Dragons, Melisandre has a similar vision. Her vision is of course way more in depth, but she does see the tower by the sea. But in that vision, she also sees dragons wheeling across the sky in the book. In episode two, Davos tells Jon that fire kills white and dragons breathe fire. And that is why Jon is on his way to Dragonstone to ask for Danny's help and her dragons for help. Danny will be preoccupied with her quest for the Iron Throne, but Melisandre is at Dragonstone currently and Melisandre could very well look into the flames and get the rest of the Hound's vision that was already adapted from her book POV chapter. Let's send Daenerys north of the wall. We see in the trailer that Jon and the Hound and Tormund and Beric and a few others are north of the wall. Daenerys isn't there that we can see. We don't see her anywhere in the trailer, but then we get a shot of Jon by himself and fire is burning in the background a lot of fire which is very possibly dragon fire now if Daenerys doesn't start out with John and company how would she know where they were how would she know where to go would she just aimlessly fly north would Drogon know where to go or Rhaegal or Viserion because John is a Targaryen and they can sense him or would Melisandre tell Daenerys to look for a mountain shaped like an arrowhead the fact that they did a vision in the flames on the show in episode one makes me think we are not done seeing visions in the flames. And I think we may get one more vision, the completion of the Hound's vision, but through Melisandre to Daenerys, and we may get dragons north of the wall. Number one dragons aren't invincible. We have a false sense of security that we have three dragons and no one can fuck with these dragons. So when our story first opens up, dragons are extinct because dragons aren't invincible. Most of the Targaryen dragons were killed by either natural causes or other dragons. There are only eight dragons that have been killed by humans and of those eight, Five of those were chained up at the time they were killed. Dreamfire, Tyraxes, Cyrax, Morgul, and Shrykos were all killed during the riot at the Dragon Pit. They were all chained up and defenseless, so I'm not even going to count those. But Vermax, Meraxes, and Stormcloud are three dragons that were successfully killed. Stormcloud and Vermax were at the bloodiest sea battle in history, the Battle of the Gullet. Stormcloud was wounded by arrows and scorpion bolts and later died from his wounds on Dragonstone. Vermax flew too low during the battle and was brought down into the sea by a crossbolt to the eye or pulled down by a grapple. He tried to get away but he sunk with the ship. Meraxes was killed during the first Dornish War at Hellholt after an iron bolt from a scorpion went through Meraxes' eye. A scorpio or a scorpion is a Roman military weapon. It looks similar to the weapon that Kyburn presented Cersei with, but the one he presented Cersei with has to be some kind of upgrade because scorpions were already present in our story. But it just so happens when Cersei shoots the weapon, she hits Valerian right in his eye, and two out of the three dragons that were killed in our story by bolts were hit in the same place, the eye, and the mechanism that delivered the hit is very similar to what Kyburn has built. So while I don't think it's going to be easy to hit a moving target, it's been done before and they have the means to do it, so prepare yourself for at least a wounded dragon, if not a dead dragon. Let me know what you guys think has been foreshadowed for the episodes to come. I'm sure you have some juice of your own and I'd like to know it. Don't forget to leave your questions for Friday's Q&A. As always, thanks for watching. I want to give a huge thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon. Thank you so much. Please like this video if you like it and click that subscribe button and hit that notification bell and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.